Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and we're going to create a frequency and relative frequency distribution as well as a histogram and I'm going to use the income variable. So you'll see that I've done a little bit of quote unquote pre-work for you because I'm going to need the minimum maximum value of the income variable. I need the range. I need to make a decision on how many intervals I want. I want to look at a proposed interval width and then what I finally decide upon. Um, and then I need to come up with my upper limits for my um, bins or my intervals and then we'll complete the um, frequency relative frequency chart. All right. So I'm first going to find my minimum. So I'm going to type in equal min. And I'll just double click there and I'm going to click on the income variable and hit enter. So I know I have a minimum of 31. Now I want equals max because I want the maximum. Click on that column, hit enter, and it's 240. So our range is simply going to be the maximum minus the minimum. And that gives me a range of 209. Um, I think that I want five intervals. That's research or preference or what you've been asked to, how many intervals you've been asked to use. And so to come up with a preliminary interval width, I'm going to take the range divided by my number of intervals. So Excel is telling me 41.8 would work. The smallest I would use would be 42, but I'm going to use something that's easy to work with and I'm going to use a width of 50 um, because it's not um, it's not that critical um, whether you're at 42 or 50. What Excel does need is it needs my upper class limits. So I know that my first interval will run from 0 up to 50. And with a width of 50, I add another 50 to that for 100, another 50 to that for 150, another 50 to that for 200, another 50 to that for 250, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So those are my five upper limits because I'm going to use these as my bins when I go to create my histogram. So I'm coming up to data. I'm going to go to data analysis, and I'm going to use <coughs> the dialog box, and I'm going to say histogram. So when I click on histogram, first thing it wants is my input range, which is my data. And so I'm simply going to click the column F, which is my income data. Now it wants the bin range, and it's asking for the upper limits. So I'll click here, and I'm going to select upper limits. Now I have to click labels because I have the upper limit and the income label at the top of my data. Um, output range, I'm just going to stick it right here on the screen where we're working. So I'm just going to say input output range. I just need to select one cell. And most importantly, I need to hit chart output if I want my histogram. And now I'm going to say OK. All right. So it's given me my histogram and now we need to do a little cleanup. First of all, we don't need this legend right, that was automatically created. So we just hit delete there. Um, I'm going to label it as properly histogram of income. I'm going to remove this label of upper limits because I don't want that label. I wanted to say Go away. I wanted to say income in dollar thousands. And next thing I have to do is we know that for a histogram, we shouldn't have these separations between our bars. So I'm going to right click on any one of the bars and I'm going to say format data series you'll see right here where it says gap width. I'm going to take this slider. I'm going to go all the way to zero. 
The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little bucket and I'm going to put a line in between my bars and I'm going to use black and I'm going to go like two point just to give it so that you can see it and then I'll just close that. So now you can see that we have our histogram make it a little bigger. I got nice black lines around it but I've got this class here that says more. Well, that's something that Excel automatically creates and so I need to get rid of that. There are no observations there. So I'm going to just hover over this, grab the corner, and I'm just going to slide it up. And what that does is that just avoid, it eliminates that and I can just delete it if I want. Okay. So now my histogram looks great. Right? So histogram is happy. So now I'm going to come back over and I'm going to work on my frequency distribution. So I have my upper limits. So I know my first class was zero from zero um, less than or equal to 50, then 50 less than or equal to 100. I have 100 less than or equal to, whoops, equal to 150, 150 less than or equal to 200, and then 200 less than or equal to 250. So these are just my upper limits. So my frequencies I grabbed um, from my from the output in Excel, 6, 4. <clears throat> so you'll see I just use these frequencies here. And so right now what I need is I need um, a total of all of those. So I have 200 observations. Relative frequency is simply um, frequency divided by total number of observations. And so in this first cell, I'm going to say equals 40 divided by 200. And I'm going to make that a hard cell reference. And by using the hard cell reference, what I can do now is I can just drag it down. Um, I may go two decimal places. And to check if you're right, remember that your total relative frequencies should sum to one. So now I have, um, make that nice and centered. So now I have a frequency distribution right here. I have my relative frequency here. And I have my histogram showing frequency on the vertical axis and income in thousands in on my horizontal axis. So that's all it takes. Hopefully you found this useful. And I, as always, I thank you for watching.